it is possible that something goes pear-shaped with our data flow, and then we end up with this ugly red triangle and exclamation mark next to it. I hate when this happens, but it is not the end of the world. In today's video, I'm going to show you options and tools you have at your disposal when it comes to troubleshooting Power BI data flows. If you stay till the end, you will learn about my five handy tips on how to get these problems fixed. So let's get started. Hey, it's me Roland, and this is Bilingual Analytics, where I help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Power BI tutorials. Hitting the like button wouldn't hurt either. So what kind of issues are we going to talk about and solve today? When it comes to data flows, you may end up with similar errors that you have encountered before with Power Query in Power BI Desktop. I mean, long refresh times, slow connections, or data not refreshing at all. Or the issue that we are facing right now at the time of recording this video, which is slow refreshes and slow everything. But I reckon it will be fixed soon, so let's not get bogged down on this one very specific problem. With that said, let's start with my first data flow troubleshooting tip. First of all, I usually start from the workspace and try to check what is the issue that Power BI identified. To do that, click on the red triangle, which will open the refresh history, and download the details of the failed refresh by clicking on this button. It provides a CSV file with some details. Now, I'm not going to lie, in many cases, this refresh history will not be that useful or won't reveal the secret recipe on how to fix this issue, but at least it can point us to the right direction. For example, in this data flow, I had an error on my data table and it relates to invalid cell value problem. Additionally, it helps me to identify the date and time when the refresh failed. So if I know that I only refresh this data flow once a day and everything worked fine until yesterday, then chances are today's file will have some sort of an error. 9 out of 10 cases, I start with this step as it is the easiest way to identify relatively easy troubleshooting steps. If I cannot identify the issue just by clicking on a red exclamation mark, I like to open Power Query Online and validate my queries or tables. To do that, just click on the data flow and then edit tables at the top right corner. Now I'm back in Power Query Online and I can go through the troubleshooting steps that I would also do in Power BI Desktop and more. I can quickly change the view from data view to schema view and identify if one of the columns have an incorrect data type. Let's say a field that should be text is number or something like that. Or I can switch to diagram view and have a graphical explanation about my data transformation steps, dependencies and much more. This great view is only available in Power Query Online, or at least at the recording of this video. And lastly, if I want, I can read through the M code using the advanced editor. While I wouldn't say that I can fluently read M code, it is possible that I spot a wrong step in my data transformation, especially if I rely on hand type M code. If a single table is causing me troubles, from time to time I like to bring it back to Power BI Desktop. I don't know why, but I just feel that I have more control over certain troubleshooting steps in desktop. Or maybe because I have a super beefy machine to use. But anyways, the point is that copying a query with all the transformation steps to Power BI Desktop is super easy. As both Power Query and Power Query Online relies on M code, it's literally just a copy-paste exercise. I can select the code in Advanced Editor, copy it, head over to Power BI Desktop, create a blank query, and paste. And that's it, now I have the query in Power BI Desktop and I can start checking my transformation steps, M code and all of that. The best part about this method is that it works the other way around as well. Once I figured out the problem in my M code, I can copy it and paste it back to Power Query Online. I love this flexibility. A super quick comment here. 
I know that for some reason, some mcode or m functions looks a bit different online than in desktop, but it's just a small percentages of all the m functions, so chances are you won't be affected by that. And most of the time Power Query Online is smart enough to suggest a fix automatically, so you don't even need to worry about this. Did you know that it's super easy to move data flows between workspaces? And you don't even need to know how to use REST API or write PowerShell scripts. You just simply select the data flow that you want to relocate, click on the three dots next to it and export JSON. Once it is done, you go to the new location, start creating a data flow, but instead of redoing the whole lot, just click on import model. Pure magic. So why would you do this exercise as a troubleshooting stop? Maybe you hit some sort of a refresh limit in the current workspace and you want to place the data flow to a dedicated workspace. Or maybe you would like to try some cool premium features and want to move the data flow from a pro workspace to a PPU or premium workspace. Or the other way around. You realize that you don't need that premium capacity, but you don't want to lose all the hard work you have done so far to clean and transform your data. Just remember, you won't be able to move any data flows to my workspace, as data flows are not supported there. If all the previous steps fail to fix an issue, you can hand over data flow ownership. It means that someone else will be able to edit your data flow. At the time of the recording of this video, data flows can only be modified by their owners. Which is a shame. But as I mentioned before, there is a possibility to hand over ownership to someone else from the company. This step could be particularly useful when there are only a handful of data flow masters within the organization, as they could potentially go in, fix issues and hand ownership back to the original owner. One thing to note here, while this option is there and it's readily available, I would still suggest to export the JSON file and share that with others. I would consider that a safer and easier approach and I would only use the takeover feature when there is a major issue or a business critical report fails to refresh, update or constantly produces errors. Or maybe when the data flow owner left the company. With that said, I hope that these five Power BI data flow troubleshooting tips will prove useful to you and the next time when you face an issue like this, you can use one or more of them. Do you have any other tips about how to fix data flow errors? Let me and others know in the comments below. I'm super keen to hear your favorite troubleshooting steps. Thanks for tuning in today and I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your reports. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!